After successfully logging into the IVG, the driver opens the Hours of Service application and sees the Status tab. At the top are the remaining hours before the driver goes into violation for any Hours of Service rule and the name of the driver whose records are displayed. If there is a co-driver logged into the IVG, that driver can be selected. To ensure driver security when there's a co-driver logged in, at any time either driver wants to view logs, the driver is prompted to re-enter a password. A green dot indicates the active driver. A gray dot indicates the inactive driver. Next to the driver's name is the current DOT, MOT in Canada, date and remaining hours until the driver goes into violation. If your company uses the workflow or vehicle inspection report applications, the driver can jump to those applications from almost any screen in hours of service. The driver may see messages showing the log status. Log update in progress, not current logs. Review and approve your logs. When the driver's logs are sent for approval, the driver sees the second message. The status screen shows how many hours the driver will gain over the next two days. Have your drivers use this information to determine if a 34-hour reset is needed. The status tab also displays the current duty status and information about that status. To edit remarks on the current status, the driver taps Remarks. To change status, the driver taps Change. Here the driver taps a different duty status. The available duty statuses are based on if this is the active or inactive driver and what features are enabled for drivers. You can define a list of remarks that a driver can specify or allow the driver to type a remark to describe what occurred during that status. If typing a remark, the driver taps in the text box and types on the pop-up keyboard. When finished, the driver closes the keyboard and taps OK. The Summary tab graphically shows the four main clocks available to the driver. The shortest bar indicates the hours of service rules that is next to go into violation. The Graph tab graphically represents the driver's duty status for the current day. The information on this tab is view only and from here the driver can see information about the selected day. The driver selects a duty status to see any remarks entered for it. The Daily Log tab shows the driver's daily duty status logs as a list. The driver can scroll among days, view info about an entry, or select duty statuses to see company info or any remarks about a duty status. During a roadside inspection, the driver can send e-rods if requested, show the inspector mode which displays different information than the default driver view, and show the header that provides additional details for the inspector. The duty cycle tab, named for the US or Canadian duty cycle the driver is running under, shows a daily sum of mileage driving time, and on-duty time. Further details are shown under the Vehicle Info. From here, the driver can request the latest duty status logs from the server. The Certify tab is where the driver would view, edit, and certify logs. For more information on editing logs, see the Driver Log Edits video. The Load tab is where the driver would enter load information and view current and historical load information. If your company has integration with a dispatch application or workflow, this information may be pre-filled and the driver doesn't have to do any manual entry for each load being hauled. Because load information is a federal requirement, if no information is entered about the load, the driver is prompted to enter load information the following day or face a form and manner violation. If there was no load while the driver was driving, the driver may enter any characters in the load ID and use bobtail or deadhead for trailer number. The driver goes to the home screen and taps driver login. The driver types a driver ID and password and if logging in as the second driver, identifies as the active or inactive driver. The driver closes the keyboard and taps OK. The driver is then prompted to identify a duty status and tap OK. A driver's duty status in hours of service is different from being logged into the IVG. Logging in identifies the driver as being in the vehicle, and the person doing the driving must be identified as the active driver. The active driver hours of service logs are updated during the course of the day. Be aware that changing the login status from active to inactive does not put the driver into an off-duty status. Drivers must maintain accurate hours of service duty status logs by using the hours of service application to manually change duty status. Verify log changes from the back office and certify logs daily. 
When the driver logs in, the DOT or MOT clock begins to count down to the next violation and the driver's login ID displays until the ID and password are confirmed over the air. When the login is confirmed, the driver's full name displays. When two drivers are in the cab, one driver is active and the other driver is inactive. For additional driver security, when there is a driver and co-driver logged into the IVG, there is a password challenge when the co-driver attempts to view or edit logs. To log in a second driver, go to the Home screen and tap Driver Login. Then tap Add. Type the second driver's ID and password. Close the keyboard. Identify as the active or inactive driver. Then tap OK. The driver is then prompted to identify a duty status and tap OK. To swap active drivers, select the inactive driver and tap Change. Tap OK. Enter that driver's password, close the keyboard, and tap OK. Now the second driver is the active driver. To log out, the driver goes to the home screen, taps Driver Login, Log Out, identifies a logged out status, and taps Log Out. In most cases, you maintain logs by manually identifying duty status changes as they occur, or the IVG puts you in the appropriate duty status automatically. Only if you select the wrong duty status, the carrier makes edits, or you forget to change your duty status will you need to edit logs. For the processes on how to edit logs, see the Driver Log and Carrier Edits video. As the first driver logging into the IVG, you are identified as the active driver and you select a duty status. When a co-driver logs in, they identify as active or inactive before selecting a duty status. The active driver is automatically placed in driving duty status when the wheels move and is prompted to drop into on duty when the wheels stop. When logging off, you are prompted to pick a final duty status. Between those events, you may also need to manually identify duty status changes. The most common manually selected duty status will be the 30-minute rest break. Keep an eye on the DOT clock to stay in compliance. As soon as you log into the IVG, the clock starts counting down to the soonest violation. The Summary tab shows all applicable hours of service clocks counting down, the lowest number in the available column indicates what rule is next to go into violation. As you approach 8 hours of on-duty time, you must take a rest break that is greater than 30 minutes long. To do so, open the Hours of Service application to the Status tab and tap Change. Tap Off-Duty. If remarks are required, you can select or enter remarks. Close the keyboard and tap OK. Until you are off-duty for more than 30 minutes, you cannot select an on-duty status. Be aware that if the wheels move for any reason while on break, you are automatically bumped into driving duty status and must restart the break or be in violation. If off-duty and using the vehicle for personal conveyance, open the Hours of Service application to the Status tab and tap Change. Tap off-duty, and tap Personal Conveyance. All other duty status changes are performed as for the 30-minute rest break. Just be sure to select the appropriate duty status and leave remarks if required. You must ensure that your load and carrier information is accurate or risk a form and manner violation. To help avoid a violation, Hours of Service prompts you to enter any missing required information when logging out. If your company has integration with a dispatch application or the workflow application, load information may be preloaded and you don't have to manually enter each load being hauled. To enter information, tap Load. Tap New Load. Type a load ID. Verify or update your start and end dates. Type a bill of lading. Type a trailer ID. Tap to close the keyboard and tap OK. If you weren't hauling a load, 
you may enter any characters for the load ID and use Bobtail or Deadhead for the trailer number. As always, ensure what you enter on your official logs of record is both accurate and complies with your company's procedures. Every 24 hours, you must review and certify your logs. Initially, when you log into the IVG, you cannot edit or certify logs because the hours of service application is synchronizing with the server and you must wait for the Review and Approve Logs message to appear. For ELDs, if you have any carrier edits, you are prompted to review and certify them after logging into the IVG. You see the Carrier Edits prompt and tap Review Carrier Edits. You can then reject or confirm those edits and, if accepted, you may certify those logs. If you reject the carrier edits, you must enter a reason for rejecting the edits. For both ELDs and AOBRDs, you certify logs in 24-hour increments, not multiple days at a time. Be aware that both certified and uncertified logs for your full duty cycle are accessible on the Certify tab. If you are certifying logs without being prompted, as part of the normal log review and certification process, from the ELD's home screen, tap Hours of Service, and on the Certify tab, tap the arrows to the right and left to scroll to specific dates. A check mark indicates a certified record. An exclamation point indicates there was a system or a sensor failure when the log was recorded. If a record is incorrect, tap the record, then tap Edit. If changing the original duty status to another, select the new duty status and a predefined remark to describe your activities during the status. Close the keyboard and tap Next. If you need to do more complex editing, like you never logged a day-long meeting, you must perform two edits to split and change duty statuses. In this example, you'll select the duty status that's an error, tap Edit, and tap Split to divide the 24-hour off-duty status. The duty status is split in half and both segments have the same status and location. Select the status, time, and location for the new duty status and add remarks to explain activities during the duty status. When finished, tap Next, type a reason for editing the status, and tap Save. At this point, you must make additional changes to this log, so tap Not Ready. Then repeat the split, duty status and time updates, add remarks, and tap Next. Type the reason for the edit, and tap Save. Now that the day is up to date, tap Certify. Do a final review of this day's logs, and if they're correct, tap Agree. Your logs for this day are now certified and show a green check mark next to each duty status. If your carrier makes edits to your logs from the host hours of service application, you see a pop-up and must review, then reject or confirm the proposed edits. If you reject the edits, they are no longer listed as pending and revert to what they were before the carrier proposed the changes. If you confirm the changes, you are prompted to certify the logs for that day. When you agree, the logs are updated over the air and the back office sees that you accepted the proposed log changes. Undefined Vehicle Activity, or UVA, is drive time that accumulates with no active driver logged in to the in-cab unit. If any undefined drive time accumulates, the next driver to log in is prompted to claim ownership of that drive time. If you reject the drive time, your company's back office personnel must manually assign it to a driver. Back office personnel periodically review reports to identify and resolve instances of UVA. If the back office assigns UVA to you, you must review and certify or reject that change. You'll see a notification when you log in notifying you that the carrier edited your logs and you can review those changes before you certify your hours. To avoid generating UVA, be sure to log in to your unit at the start of the day and verify your full name resolves 
indicating your login was successful. If you have a co-driver, be sure to indicate that you are the active driver while you are driving. Personal conveyance, previously known as off-duty driving, is a special case of the off-duty status that, if allowed by your company, lets you manually identify time that you generate while off-duty as personal conveyance. Your company may allow unlimited personal conveyance or limit it to a number of minutes. If your company limits the length of personal conveyance, you'll receive an alert on the IVG that indicates that you're exceeding your company's personal conveyance threshold, but you are not automatically dropped into drive duty status. If available, you change your duty status to off-duty and flag it as personal conveyance. You must enter remarks about the duty status. Close the keyboard and tap OK. While you are in personal conveyance, the GPS resolution for your location is reported to the nearest 10 miles, 16 kilometers. Be aware that your company may have set up automatic notification so that someone is alerted when you enter personal conveyance. When drive time accumulates as personal conveyance or yard move, it is indicated on the graph tab as a different color, not on a separate line. Be sure to manually terminate personal conveyance when you're done moving. Drivers are required to keep their duty status logs up to date and certify them every 24 hours. When drivers are stopped by a DOT or MOT officer, drivers can expect that, in addition to a possible vehicle inspection, they must present their driver's license, medical card and waiver, hazmat requirements, and other materials including current daily logs and hours of service. Drivers should have the ELD guide available and accessible in cab as the inspector may request to see it. This guide is a set of instructions on how to share or transfer your logs to an inspection officer. If stopped for an inspection while using the Omnitrax Hours of Service application, the driver will Open the Hours of Service application and navigate to the Graph tab. Hand the IVG to the inspector through the driver's window. Provide the ELD guide. If the inspector requests electronic copies of the logs, the driver must Navigate to the Day Log tab and tap ERODS. Select Web Services or Email. Enter any comments and tap Send.